Now, if y'all remember, I was telling y'all about how at my previous job, uh, there was a new position that had opened up to be a team lead. And several of us were interested in that position. But and even though we were interested in that position, we all figured that only this one girl, she was going to be the one to get it. Because while she was qualified for the position, she was also very tight uh, with the manager. They were friends. They would go out for drinks. They would go out for lunch. And they would hang out outside of work a lot. So we figured that she had the one up. And a lot of us figured the only reason that they are even making this position available, making this position public, is so they can have us all go through the process to make it look like it was a fair process. All the meanwhile, they only planned on hiring her and her by herself. So we still applied. We still we were actually interviewed as well. And of course, we put our best foot forward, came through with our suits on. And for the ladies, they came through dressed up in their dresses. And we all were ready to do what we could to get the job. So what happened? We applied. We were denied. And the job went to the girl who it was expected to go to. And nobody was surprised. Some people, including myself, were upset because we figured, like, why would they even waste our time and take us through that entire process if they only planned on hiring her the whole time? Now, I wonder if Joe Witt and Chris Richard are feeling this way right now. Who knows? But anyway, the Ravens are expected, expected to hire Mike McDonald to be their new defensive coordinator. Now, what's crazy is that as soon as Wink was fired, well, as soon as they came to a mutual agreement to part ways, this is a name that I kept hearing over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And I know a lot of y'all did, too. And I was wondering, hmm, why do we keep hearing his name? And he's over there at Michigan. Whoa, let me give you a friendly reminder. Even though he was over there working with Jim Harbaugh. He, before he was working with John Harbaugh, he came to the Ravens in 2014 as an intern. So he's been around the Ravens staff for a while. So he stayed there for a couple of years. Uh, and then in 2017, he coached the defensive backs. And, and then in 2018, from 2018 to 2020, tongue twister there, uh, he ended up coaching the linebackers. So he took Wink's job. And now it's looking like it's coming full circle. He'll be taking Wink's job again. So um, anyway, uh, but then after in 2020, after that season, he decided, you know what? I done work for my boy John Harbaugh for a little bit. He's cool. OK, cool guy. I like him. Let me go see what's up with his brother, Jim. Let me go work for him. See, see, see what's going on with that. So he went over there and coached <laughs> with the, uh, the, the Michigan Wolverines. So I guess this means that Derek will be back. Get it? Because Derek's a wolf. And anyway, um, terrible dad joke. But anyway, he is very familiar with the Baltimore Ravens. So if you're familiar somewhere, that can be a good thing. That can work in your advantage. You know the staff. You know the people. You know the GM. You know the ins and the outs. You even know a couple of the players, too. But this is also something that concerns me a bit as well. Um, because, because he is so familiar. Because family ties. <laughs> he worked for John. Then Jim was like, oh, let me borrow real quick. Then he worked for Jim. Then John was like, hey, little bro, you give me him back right now. And now he's expected to be back with the Ravens again. Um, Ravens really had me fooled. They really had me fooled with them interviewing outside. Because remember, remember we talked about this. We talked about how it was so crazy. Because Ravens with defensive coordinators, they always hire from within. I was thinking, man, it is so crazy that they were requesting interviews with guys outside the organization. They were requesting interviews from the Cowboys defensive backs coach, from the, uh, the, the uh, Saints defensive backs coach. So it's like, oh, okay, oh, they're really going for turnovers. Oh, okay, I see it. I see the vision. They really want to improve on turnovers. All the meanwhile, they probably had this plan in place this whole time. This whole time. But anyway, I am... Um, Gonna hope for the best. Hope for the best. Now, 
We've been talking about this offseason, a change in philosophy. We've been talking about this before Wink was fired and because we expected him to be given a pass, which obviously he wasn't. Um, and just eh, anyway, um, Wink, with the change in philosophy, he is younger. So that's a plus. That's a great thing. So maybe he can bring some innovative stuff to the Baltimore Ravens and to their defense. And hopefully, since he was here when Dean Pease was here, hopefully, since he was here when Wink was here, hopefully he can take things that work for both of those guys, even some stuff that worked for him in Michigan. But hopefully he can take some stuff that worked, implement it, along with implementing some new stuff too, but also look at what didn't work and be like, mm, no, I I'm, I'm not doing that. Because it's important that the Ravens have growth. Now, usually the most growth in any situation, and let me know if I'm wrong, but usually the most growth in any situation comes when you are uncomfortable, when you have to get out of that comfort zone, when you have to step out and do something that is out of the ordinary for you, because it makes you uncomfortable. It presents a challenge and it's like, oh, wow, I, I, I've never done this before, but you know what? I think I can make it happen. But this is a uh, comfort zone hire. Now, not to say that it can't work out because there is still a possibility that there could be a significant philosophy change in the defense because we know with Dean Pease, Winks was a linebacker, Wink was a linebacker coach under Dean Pease, and with Dean Pease, we know the Ravens, they they were not a bad defense. They weren't. But situational play calling was bad. It was it was bad. And they would hold it down, hold it down, hold it down. But then situationally, some bad calls were played. Uh, and they were just so, so timid. They just seemed so timid. But then Wink came. Wink said, timid? Oh, no, I don't even got that word in my vocabulary. I am aggressive. I'm hype. I'm ready to go. Let's go blitz. And he showed us from jump in 2018. Game, season on the line, not even game on the line, season on the line. Cover zero. Go get Baker Mayfield. And it looked like C.J. Mosley was supposed to blitz too, but then he dropped back at the last second, caught the pick. Interception, Ravens win. The place goes crazy. <sighs> That's Wink. Aggress aggressive 24-7. Wink was actually aggressive 25-7. So between Dean Pease and, and, and Wink, there, <laughs> there was no middle ground. And that's what we're trying to find. We're trying to find that middle ground. We're trying to find uh, a, a defensive coach that situationally can get this thing right. And we know stuff is going to happen. We know sometimes some plays are just going to fall apart. We know sometimes some guys are just not going to be able to get that pick or make that tackle or whatever it may be. It's not all on the coaches, but that's where it starts. Now, I really hope... That with Harbaugh, even though they're hiring somebody who he's obviously familiar with, I mean, you might as well just bring on Jim too. Might as well bring on little bro. Like, what? why not? I, I, I would not be surprised if they made Jim Harbaugh like assistant head coach and they made up some position for him. I wouldn't be surprised at all. At all. So we'll see what happens because, of course, you keep hearing about, oh, Jim, he's been eyeing a return to the NFL. I know some people talk Dolphins, some people talk Raiders, some people talk this and that, but you never know, man. Because you know them family ties are something serious. Hashtag Hood Harbaugh. Put, put his boys on. Anyway, um, with uh, Mike McDonald, um, my hope is that he will hold himself accountable Everything that same stuff we've been saying, this is nothing new to anybody. But my hope is that he will hold himself accountable and that Harbaugh will also hold him accountable. But that's my worry because he's somebody that's close, obviously close to the organization and close to the family. Because, you know, if you work with family, even if you don't work with family, just period. But if you work with family, if things get a little rough. Those can make for some very uncomfortable conversations that some people do not want to have. They don't want to have them. 
but it has to be done. You have to do what's best for the business. You got to do what's best for business. This is why so many people say, oh, no, don't work with your family. Don't, don't do that. Don't mix uh, business and friendship. It just never works. I don't believe that in all cases because I've seen plenty of times where it has worked. But I can also understand why people say that. But I'm hoping that this year and moving forward, John Harbaugh can change the way that he handles these family ties. Hold them accountable. Hold the family accountable. Because we know the Ravens, again, they are a family-oriented business. So many of y'all gave friendly reminders yesterday. Oh, we all knew John wasn't going anywhere. Him and EDC are neighbors. Yeah, we know that. We saw all those videos back then when they showed EDC uh, talking to Harbaugh from across the fence. And they were doing their whole little six feet apart thing. And what We remember those. But it's important that they hold each other accountable. John hold his coach, his coordinators accountable. EDC hold John accountable. Bashadi hold EDC accountable. Everybody needs to be held accountable. It is so important for the success of the team. Because if you had a business and people just kept messing up left and right, and you didn't hold them accountable, what do you expect to happen to that business? It's going to fail without fail. It's going to fail. There's no doubt about it. But if somebody is messing up, and, and, and even though you love that person, that person may be your friend, y'all may be, y'all go out for drinks together, go get lunch, dinner, y'all know each other's families and whatnot. If you have that uncomfortable conversation with that person, let them know, hey, you know I love you. So this ain't coming from nowhere but a place of love. But you got to tighten up. And I ain't talking about Tennessee. You got to tighten up. You need to fix what you've been doing because if you continue that, this thing ain't going to work. And I'm letting you know that straight. it's not going to work. So fix this and fix it quick because you're going on a slippery slope. And I ain't going to be able to save you. You need to have those uncomfortable conversations. Now, and, and it may ruffle some feathers initially. Some people may be like, oh, man, why are they talking to me like that? And some feelings may initially be hurt. But once the person gets past the feelings part, they're going to realize, like, wait a minute. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, I did mess up. I, wow, I, I, I was coming up short. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, mm -mm, that, that's on me. Wow, I can't believe I didn't even, I didn't even notice that. So we'll see how this thing goes. Now, for Mr. McDonald, let's see. Let's see. And let's hope that our edge rushes, our pass rushes, they get to be just that. They get to be just that. And, and he allows them to feast. He allows them to eat. He allows them to do their thing. Because, oh, man, we miss that. We, we miss that so much. Let's hope in this passing league that our defensive line and linebackers and whatnot, that they can get to the guys that are passing the football, those being the quarterbacks. Let's hope. Let, let's hope that, again, Wink was not a bad defensive coordinator. But where he fell short, let's hope that Mike McDonald, he can stand tall. Because just so... A few changes here and there, even some significant changes here and there, it, it would make such a big difference for the team moving forward. My biggest hope, too, is that Mike McDonald will recognize the strengths of his players. Again, he's expected uh, to get the job. I haven't seen anything official yet. But I would hope that if, if he does become the defensive coordinator, I would hope that he can recognize the strengths of his players and play them to their strengths. Whoever you're going to draft, whoever you're going to sign, whoever's going to be with the team, play them to their strengths. Recognize what they're good at. Recognize what they're bad at. Focus on how they can get better. And I would hope that the defense is not some defense that makes players have to second guess everything. 
I would hope the defense is some defense where the players aren't overthinking every single move that they make. I would hope the defense is a defense that puts players in the right position to succeed. I would hope this defense is a defense that's willing to make adjustments on the fly. I would hope that this defense is a defense that's willing to change things. Go into, go into your game with a game plan, but be willing to change it if it's not working. I would hope that this defense is a defense that doesn't look at every single quarterback and every single offensive line and every single team the exact same way and go into every single game with the exact same game plan. That's what we're hoping for with this defense. So, Mr. McDonald, <laughs> you're up. It's on you. We're rooting for you, for sure. We're rooting for him, hoping it works out. But there's a lot of pressure. Oh, it's a lot of pressure for sure. But at the same time, he knows that this is his opportunity to possibly even be a head coach. Because as a defensive coordinator, even offensive coordinators too, but this is his opportunity as a coordinator to go from coordinator to be able to call in his own shots for his own team in the future. So we'll see how he responds to the task. We'll see how he does the job. And we'll see if this whole thing Ends up working itself out. I love y'all team. Keep it clean. Shout out to the Michigan Wolverines. And I guess I'm about to be off the scene. Love y'all. Y'all stay up.